I believe in Hashem. I trust in Hashem. There never is a moment when that I am alone and I'm on my own. I believe and I trust in Hashem because I understand that He's holding my hand and every step is perfectly planned. He's holding me tight so I'll be all right. I believe and I trust in Hashem. We find ourselves now in very special days. It's called the three weeks, during which we remember that the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed and all the Yidden went into Golos. It's also the time when we strengthen our Betachen, our Emuna, and the words of Hashem that He's going to take us out of Golos and rebuild the third Beis HaMikdash. The first and the second Beis HaMikdash were built by people, and therefore other people were able to come and destroy it. But the third Beis HaMikdash is built by Hashem Himself, and no one will ever be able to destroy it. It's going to be a bias Nitzchi. It's going to be forever. Now there is something that we do during the three weeks to weaken the Chorben, to make the destruction part of it weaker and strengthen our hopes, our betachen and Hashem that the Geula is going to come very, very soon and these days of sadness are going to be turned into days of Yom Tif and happiness and joy. What is it that we do during the three weeks? We learn Hilchais Beis Habechira. We learn about the laws, how to build the Beis Hamikdash. I want to tell you something that says in Medrash Tanchuma. The Medrash tells us that when Yecheskel Hanavi was in Golos, after the first base of Mikdash was destroyed, Hashem said to him, I want you to go and teach the Yidden all the laws about building the base of Mikdash. Yechezkel said to Hashem, But Ribbeinu Shalaylam, the Yidden are now in Golos. What's the point of teaching them about building the base of Mikdash? They're not able to build it yet. How about waiting until they get back to Eretz Yisrael? And then I'll teach them how to build the Beis HaMikdash. So Hashem said, What do you want? That because my children are in Golos, the building of my Beis HaMikdash should be stopped? Should be bottle? Should not happen? You know what you should do? You should teach it to them now. Let them learn it now, all the details, the measurements, and how to build the base of Mikdash. And you know what? I will consider it. If they will be busy with learning the laws of how to build the base of Mikdash, in my eyes, it will be considered as if they are actually building the Beis HaMikdash. And you know what? When we learn this, not only are we going to feel that we're building a Beis HaMikdash, we're soon going to have it in front of our eyes. Because we're not satisfied in Golos. Even doing this, which makes us feel like we're building a Beis HaMikdash, but we don't see the Beis HaMikdash. We can't bring Korbanis yet. We want a real Beis HaMikdash that's going to come to this world, to Yerushalayim, and we'll all be able to go there and see once again how Aaron is kindling the Menorah 
and the Kayanim are doing their Avaida with the Karbanais, and the Yidna are doing their part that they have to do. Everyone will be so happy, will be the time of Geula, of happiness that has no end. So, what do we do? When we learn about the building of the Beis HaMikdash, that gives us a feeling to want to have Mashiach now. You know why? Because if I don't learn about it, and it's out of my mind, I chas v'shalem might forget about it sometimes of the day. I might become too comfortable in Galus with other things that make me comfortable for my body. Yes, we're supposed to be comfortable. We're supposed to be healthy, happy, have parnasa. We have to have all the comforts that we can have in Golos. But we shouldn't be satisfied with that. We should constantly, every single day, beg Hashem for the Geula. Because we're not settling for Golos. We want Mashiach now. So when we learn about the Beis HaMikdash, learn about how to build it, it gives us like an appetite. I want to get there already. I want to see the Beis HaMikdash already. So I have a story for you that happened in the times of the Baal Shem Tov, which is going to teach us a lesson that we're never satisfied in Galos as comfortable as we can be. And so many Yidna are not even comfortable. But even if we are comfortable, that is not enough. We scream, Ad Masai! We want the Geola now. And here is the story. Reb Wolf Kitsas was one of the closest students of the Baal Shem Tev. He had a very big thirst to go to Eretz Yisrael. He wanted so much to be in a land which is called Eretz HaKodesh. Can you imagine what's in an Aren Kodesh in Shul? A Sefer Taira. Because it's a holy place. And you put a holy thing in a holy place. So you can understand, especially that he was a tzaddik, as he was, Reb Wolf wanted so much to be in Eretz HaKadosh, in a holy land. But he always pushed this desire aside. You know why? Because he didn't want to leave his Rebbe. His Rebbe, the Baal Shem Tov, lived in Europe. And he wanted to go to Eretz Yisrael. That means leaving his Rebbe. Uh-uh. <laughs> he didn't want that, so he always stayed there. But one time, his thirst to be in Eretz Yisrael was so strong that he thought, I have to talk to my Rebbe about this. So he came to the Baal Shem Tev and he shared with him his feelings. He shared with him what he feels like about going to Eretz Yisrael. The Baal Shem Tev listened to him very carefully and then he thoughtfully answered, The time has not yet come for you to go to Eretz Yisrael. For Reb Wolf, that was enough. But a few months later, when the burning desire started to come up again, he thought, the Rebbe didn't say no. He said, not yet. So maybe now is the time. So he came again to the Baal Shem Tev, and he asked the Baal Shem Tev, can I go to Eretz Yisrael? And the Baal Shem Tev still did not give him permission. And without permission, Reb Wolf does nothing, nor big or small. And going to Eretz Yisrael is no small thing. A while passed, and once again, Reb Wolf got the urge to go to Eretz Yisrael. And that caused him to come again to the Baal Shem Tov 
to ask again. This time, the Baal Shem Tev said, Yes, you may travel to Eretz Yisrael. You may take that long and difficult journey to the Holy Land, Eretz HaKadosh. Before Reb Wolf left the Baal Shem Tev, the Baal Shem Tev said to him, If anyone will ask you any question on your way to Eretz Yisrael, Think carefully before you give your answer. In other words, don't answer right away. Think about it. Think what you're ready to answer, and only then should you give your answer. Revolf went home to pack his bags. He put in his talus and fill-in, svarim, and other things that he needs for the long trip. And he got onto the first ship that's going to Eretz Yisrael. Now in those days, traveling to Eretz Yisrael took many weeks. And whenever the ship would pass near an island, the ship would stop off by the island. Everybody would get off. They would be able to buy things from the people living on the island or get food, whatever they needed. When the captain was ready to continue further, the captain would sound the horn. Ooh! And everybody would hear it and come back to the ship. At one of such stops on an island, Red Wolf also got off the ship. Of course, he took along with him his talus and tefillin. He always made sure never travel, to travel anywhere without his talus and tefillin. When it came time for Mincha, he looked for a quiet spot on the island and began davening Mincha. He got so carried away with the kavana paying attention to the davening that he didn't even hear the horn blast that the ship is leaving. So when he finished davening Mincha, he looked up. No one's here. <laughs> Everyone's gone. The ship is gone. The people are gone. The people who came to greet them on the island are gone. He's left all alone. They left him behind. Don't be worried, Revolf said to himself. You're not alone. Hashem is with you, taking care of you. You will be all right. Maybe he sang the song, I believe in Hashem. He surely felt it. So Revolf began looking around. Maybe he'll find someone. Who knows, maybe even a Yid. So he began walking and looking around the island, which looked empty. It was getting evening time, and he wants to make sure that he's going to have somewhere safe to spend the night. As he was walking towards a forest on the island, he suddenly noticed smoke going up to the sky. If there is smoke, there must be fire. There must be someone living here on this island. It's not totally deserted. So he began following the smoke. There was no path in the forest to go there, but he just followed where it is. And it didn't take long. And he came to a small hut. And to his pleasant surprise, there was a mezuzah on the door. What is a Yid doing here on this empty island? He wondered. He right away knocked on the door and was so happy to see that the one who opened the door looked like a very special, nice-looking Yid. Beautiful face, long white beard, who welcomed him. Shalom Aleichem! Revolf told him what had happened. 
He explained that he got left behind, and now he's stuck on the island. The Yid told him, don't worry, nothing to be afraid of. There are some people living on this island, though not many. True, I'm the only Yid here, but I'm not staying here for long. Ships pass here regularly, and this island belongs to Turkey. And there is a Turkish officer with soldiers that protect this island, that no robbers should come, no pirates should come. Don't worry, Reb Wolf Kitsis. A ship will soon be here on the way to Eretz Yisrael, so that you'll be able to continue your journey. In the meantime, Shabbos is coming, and you're more than welcome to be my guest. Reb Wolf was more than happy with his unexpected good fortune. He was wondering, what is a Yid who seems like to be a Yid who keeps Torah and mitzvahs, what is he doing on an island all alone without his family? He was also wondering, how did he know my name before I even said it to him? But he didn't dare question the Yid. Shabbos passed very pleasantly. The Yid took such good care of Reb Volf, gave him everything he needed. Most important, the Shabbos was such a delight because they learned so much Torah together. And they davened together. And during the three Saudis, they spoke Divrei Torah. The next day, on Sunday, a ship arrived to the island, and Revolf thanked his host for his kind hospitality. Just before leaving, the Yid said to Revolf, You have traveled through Russia and Poland. How are the Yidden doing in Golos? Baruch Hashem, thank God, Hashem takes well care of them. Reb Wolf was already aboard the ship when he suddenly remembered what the Baal Shem Tov advised him, to think carefully before answering any question that's put to him. Oy vey! When the Yid asked me this question about how the Yid Narangolos, I did not think carefully. I answered quickly without even waiting a second. So I didn't keep the condition of the Baal Shem Tov. I have no right to continue my trip to Eretz Yisrael. So at the first opportunity, he took a ship back home, back to the Baal Shem Tov. A few weeks later, Reb Wolf presented himself to the Baal Shem Tov. After greeting him with a warm Shalom Aleichem, the Baal Shem Tov asked him, Did you do as I advised you? Reb Wolf told the Baal Shem Tov everything. And he said, Because I forgot the Rebbe's advice, I turned back and came back home. Now, he asked the Rebbe, What can I do to correct my mistake? The Baal Shem Tev said, You have already paid for your mistake by not completing your trip to Eretz Yisrael, although you were already so close to it. Yes, by coming back home and not going to Eretz Yisrael, you already paid for your mistake. And I know how difficult it was for you. Now I can tell you, says the Baal Shem Tov, what this was all about. Avram Avinu complained to Hashem about his children, why Hashem is keeping them in Golos so long and they have to suffer so much. To which Hashem answered, It is not so bad. They don't suffer so much in Golos. If you want proof, 
Ask a Yid who never lies. And hear what he says. That Yid is Reb Wolf Kitsis. He only tells the truth. So it was arranged that Avram Avinu was your host for Shabbos on the island. And the rest you know. Had you followed my advice and have thought about your answer before saying it, you would have added some very important words. You would have told him how much the Yitin are waiting for Mashiach and how they daven three times a day and beg Hashem v'sechzena eneinu b'shuvcha l'tziyon barachmim that our eyes should see how the Shekhinah comes back to Yerushalayim. If you would have said this, who knows, Mashiach might have already come by now. What do we learn from this story? There are many lessons. But the most important lesson is that we're never, ever satisfied in Galos. We have to look forward to Mashiach's coming. And we have to beg for it. And no matter what, that's our greatest wish. We want Mashiach now. We want Geula now. We want the Beis HaMikdash now. We're not going to be satisfied with anything less. Yes, Hashem is with us in Galus, takes care of us in Galus, but we're not satisfied with that. We want Mashiach now. And just in the schus, as a reward of our hopes for Mashiach to come, we hope for him every day and the entire day. We hope for Mashiach's coming every day and all the day, the entire time. We will be Zaycha, we'll have Mashiach now. Amen.